Hi everyone, how's everyone doing today? So usually I'd be doing my normal live streams across my pages on Facebook, but unfortunately due to the bad connection where I am, um, I'm unable to do that. So I decided to just go ahead, film my videos as normal, and then you can still engage. It will be different because obviously when I go live, you have the opportunity to engage, get involved in the discussion, but you can still leave your comments and let me know what you think. And something we're gonna talk about today is do not let these four things destroy your relationship. So as a relationship counsellor, um, I also work with individuals around relationships, stress, low self-esteem and depression. Um, a lot of the times, also when I'm watching um, videos on YouTube or when I'm hearing stories, relationships sometimes can start off really well and then halfway through or towards the end, lots of things start to come up and people it's basically people not navigating through the issues and through the downs and what they're doing is they're allowing certain things to come between them and their relationship now i'm not going to go into the deeper ones there's probably a million things that can destroy a relationship i'm going to choose four common things that come up and then i'm going to kind of give you some tips as well on how you can um, navigate through them so the four that we're going to talk about today are money issues, lack of sex or intimacy, too much time spent apart, and bickering over nonsense or minor things. So relationships go through seasons. So you're never going to have a relationship that starts off one way and then it just continues smoothly without any bumps. And the reason for that is because relationships consist of two people and you're, you're, you grow as a person, you're probably not the same person you were five years ago. So the relationship therefore can't be the same as it was five years ago. And then one of the biggest mistakes people make is feeling that they want their relationship to be the same as it was when they first met. But then they're not the same as they were when they met their partner. So it's impossible. And also it would be pretty boring if you uh, the relationship was exactly the same as it was. 10 years down the lane, 15 years down the line, 20 years down the line, nothing could change. Most people wouldn't really want that anyway. You want the relationship to grow and to progress. But what you also want is for it to grow in a productive way and a healthy way. So there are lots of things that can destroy a relationship, but we're going to just look at these four because I think these come up a lot, not only um, the reasons people go for counselling, but also these is what I've heard as well. Money issues. So how you can get around this basically is before the relationship gets serious. So this should be during the dating stages through the um, even before you move in together, before you get married. This is where money needs to be discussed. There's so many people that go into a relationship. They don't know their partner's history of money. They don't know if someone's got debts or not. They don't discuss you know, whether someone's going to work and the other person stay at home, whether they but they want both parties to work. You need to have these discussions and not be fearful of having them. People are scared of talking about money. They're scared of talking about sex. There's lots of things that people are scared of talking about. The issue then arises when you're in the relationship, it's too late then because these things are coming up where your partner is hiding um, expenses from you, where you try to get a mortgage and then you realise one of your partners has got been bankrupt or in debt. You need to discuss these issues so they don't drive you apart. These, This is probably in the top three reasons people break up. Money's one of them. Having affairs is another one. I think, um, I can't remember the third one, but this is statistically. So money is a major thing. So you need to not allow it to come between you and your partner. It's all about working as a team you know even if someone has got issues with money if you handle it together as a team as long as you're aware of it there shouldn't be an issue the issue comes up when people keep things secret where it's not discussed and it's not known so number two is a lack of sex and intimacy now i made a live video about this the other day i've got videos on my youtube channel and new journeys counseling about this um, any relationship which is starved of affection, intimacy and sex is just on a waiting game for things to just end. The reason for that is because as human beings, the main reason we 
enter into a relationship is so that we can have not just a companion but someone who we can be intimate with now intimacy doesn't always have to mean sex but even when there's a lack of affection a lack of connection when it gets to the point where you were just apart in so many ways you're sitting apart from each other you don't like being in the same room as each other you find ways to um, not just sleep in different rooms but just be in different rooms in the house you find ways to go off on holidays or trips to apart um, there's loads of ways you can break the intimacy and the connection so what you need to do is to make it a concrete effort you need to say to yourself that you are going to find time for each other and find time for intimacy now even if you're tired and you just like thinking oh, you know he's, he always wants sex and I'm always tired or why is this person always trying to hold my hand or they're always wanting to kiss or hug and I'm that affectionate person and I'm not touchy-feely it's sometimes it's about um, doing what feels natural that's one thing but also making the effort sometimes because you know that your partner would appreciate it I'm not someone that in my relationships that used to be like holding hands and extremely affectionate but I do like hugs I do like cuddles I went out with someone and they liked holding hands in public now it felt strange at first because I was thinking this doesn't feel right for me but then it became natural it became okay and the reason it became okay was because one he wasn't doing anything wrong by holding my hand two he was actually demonstrating a, a firm affection towards me so that was felt good and three I started thinking why am I bothered about what other people think if this feels good which it did then that's fine and also it's it would make the other person feel bad if you said I'm not going to hug you in public I'm not going to kiss you in public I'm not going to hold your hand you know it's about your relationship so intimacy and sex is really important the fourth thing that can destroy a relationship if you're not careful this is a big one actually is bickering over nonsense and minor things now everyone knows there's going to be things that you disagree on in a relationship and some of those things can be major they can you can have these explosive arguments I'm not talking about them I'm talking about the constant nagging bickering where you're just snapping at each other where it's just you run eggshells where it's I've seen some couples where it's just pathetic <laughs> you know um, and I'm not saying that about my um, clients I'm talking about people I know they're just bicker over everything you know what do we watch on TV they're arguing over it how much cut sugar you put in the tea oh, putting the cup down without putting the coaster down there first not taking your shoes off now it can get to a point where the person you're bickering and moaning at all the time is literally switched off they've detached and what you've got to be careful of people is once someone detaches from you emotionally because they've had enough they will not tell you they'll just show you because they'll leave or they'll have an affair or they will just leave you a letter and they'll just clear out and they'll say I'm sick of this and this does happen and I have worked with clients where this has happened where the person has said oh, I thought everything was fine he didn't tell me or she didn't tell me they didn't tell you because they've had enough of hearing everything and they've just gone that's their solution so although you might think the bickering is part of the relationship it's what we do we're always bicker it's no big deal it's just that nagging nagging constant attacking that will actually be worse than if you have a massive blowout and then you resolve it because with a massive argument a disagreement you resolve it and then you go back to normal with the constant bickering it never stops that's the problem it's just ongoing so they're the four things I think that you should be wary of if they're um, happening in your relationship you should try to avoid you should try to eliminate as much as possible and you should just be cautious of because in a relationship you have responsibility for yourself the part you play you don't have responsibility for how your partner acts what he does or she does you can't control them but you can control yourself you can look at the relationship as a whole unit and say anything I do is going to be for the best interests of my relationship therefore I will not do this I will not cheat I will not um, belittle my partner in public I will not neglect the intimacy side I will not hide things about money all of those things are things you can do how your partner responds to them you don't know but at least you can try your best so I hope you found this video useful 
please feel free to leave your comments. You can share this video if you think it will benefit someone else. And thank you guys for watching. Have a great day. Bye.